in August, again, uh, August 26th of 2008, physicist David Chandler and I both challenged NIST on their pre preliminary report, uh, World Trade Center 7. Uh, for example, in the report, they said that they used a constant speed estimate to deter to in estimating the uh, time for the fall of the World Trade Center 7. I pointed out this is not uh, good physics. They also ignored an observed period of free fall, as David Chandler pointed out. So here is what David Chandler noticed. Now these are the uh, dots are data points actually taken from videos of the uh, fall of World Trade Center 7. And fitting a straight line over this portion, as you can see, fits the data points very well for a period of about two and a quarter seconds. The acceleration works out to about 9.885 meters per second squared. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. This is almost precisely the acceleration due to gravity. And uh, we both, uh, David and I, challenged NIST. This is a public meeting uh, that is uh, over the internet. It's kind of interesting. We sent in questions to NIST saying, look, your report, your preliminary report, has some big flaws and oversights and apparent errors. Can you look into this? And they did uh, look into it. And here's what NIST came up with. Now, if you can remember that a little bit, that fit to the data, NIST, red data, points, red circled <laughs> data points. And again, looking at the actual videos of the collapse of World Trade Center 7, uh, they did a fit, which is the red line. And indeed, for a period of 2.25 seconds, just as observed by physicist David Chandler, NIST checked, and sure enough, there is free fall, nothing in the way for over two seconds in the uh, fall of World Trade Center 7. Now let's read what NIST says about this. This is their final report now. Not in the preliminary report, but in their final report, um, I believe it was November of 2008, last year. And here's what they say. Quote, the slope of the velocity curve is approximately constant between 1.75 and 4.0 seconds. That's a time period of 2.25 seconds. A good straight line fit to the points in this range allowed e uh, open circles in the figure we just saw, allowed estimation of a constant downward acceleration during this time interval. Quoting NIST, this acceleration was 32.2 feet per second squared, 9.81 meters per second squared, equivalent to the acceleration of gravity G exactly <laughs> within experimental errors, the acceleration of gravity G. And then they go on. This free fall drop continued for approximately eight stories, or 32 meters, 105 feet. So for over 100 feet, the building, as you, as you look at the roof in both cases, is freely falling, nothing in the way. Now in the question and answer period, when David Chandler and I challenged this to their errors uh, looking at the uh, drop of the building. Uh, Shyam Sundar said, well, um, free fall would, would mean that there's nothing in the way. And that can't happen because as the building collapses, there's a lot of material in the way. I'm paraphrasing. That's basically what he said. And we agreed with that. But now, from the data, NIST is constrained to admit that there was free fall drop for a time period of two and a quarter seconds, which doesn't sound like much, but when things are dropping over 100 feet at free fall, that is significant. So <clears throat> this demonstrates, this free fall drop, that there was nothing in the way. No beams, no structure, no concrete floors, no significant mass. Now, how do you get mass out of the way? Explosives, is there any other way? <laughs> They didn't answer. In a, in a model in which you have the floors still there because you didn't use explosives, so the floors are intact, as the upper structure hits the floors below, the stationary floors, it slows down the structure. It's just like when you hit, um, this does happen to us occasionally, you hit something in the way of your car, uh, 
perhaps a, a smaller car. It, even, it doesn't matter how small it is, it slows you down some. That's conservation of momentum. In order for there to be free fall, which means nothing slowing you down, it means there's nothing significant in the way. And they did not explain, they don't answer how this could happen, unfortunately. Now I thought they would, after we caught them on their error, they admitted, they checked the data, yes, there is free fall, it's amazing. You'd think they would change their conclusions. Instead, they simply assert without proof that this period of free fall for over 100 feet, followed by about one and a half seconds of impeded fall, is consistent, that's their word, consistent with their results of global collapse as they discuss in chapter 12 of their report. But they, in other words, they didn't change anything in chapter 12 of their report. They just said, oh, yeah, free fall, um, 